Welcome back to the Screensavers. He is the author of such great books as Hyperspace and Visions. He's also a professor of theoretical physics at the City University of New York City and one of our most welcome guests today. He takes on two huge sci-fi blockbusters in the theaters right now, X-Men 2 and The Matrix Reloaded, actually, which will be out next week. We find out what's actually possible and what's baloney with physicist Michio Kaku via satellite from our New York bureau. Michio, it's great to have you back. Great to be back on. Welcome. Now, have you seen X-Men 2 yet? And of X-Men ever since the first comic came out. Yeah, so have I. So have I. We didn't hear you. Did you see? Have you seen the movie? I'm not yet. I saw the first X-Men movie, right, however, right. and uh, I love these movies. Yeah, I think they're a lot of fun. The idea, of course, X-Men 2 is based around the, the mil military is conducting a manhunt for the mutants. That's who the X-Men are. They're mutants. They're viewed as being dangerous. Do we have anything to fear from mutants? Not really. You see, we have to realize that we are mutants. Oh. We are mutant monkeys. We separated from the apes about six million years ago. So homo superior is not something to be afraid of. Mutations take place over thousands of years, very, very slowly. We don't have to worry about a homo more superior? <laughs> no, we don't. Oh, all right. Uh, because usually mutations involve just a single gene being altered. And so mutants are very, very close to the original copy. Right. Well, I know that nobody's going to ever have adamantium claws. That's pretty far-fetched. But is it possible to have some of those powers, my, telepathy, uh, you know, eyesight that can burn things, things like that? Well, I think cyborgs, enhanced humans, rather than homo superior, may have these powers. For example, Magneto. If you had room temperature superconductors, you would have millions of gauss of magnetic fields, and you would have the power of Magneto. Wow. And at the present time, using silicon technology, we can etch transistors and also laser beams, lasers the size of blood cells. That's the smallest laser on record. So it is conceivable that one day we may be able to enhance, enhance the power of the human body so that it has laser power and magnetic power. I want that. I'll go and buy that. That's, a, that's an add-on I'll buy. How far, uh -huh. do you think, how, how far off do you think we're, for, we're doing these kind of man-machine cyborgs? We're actually taking biology and modifying it with, with physical objects. Well, we can enhance a little bit now human eyesight, for example. It is possible to hook into the optic nerve part of the brain. However, we only have the ability to get perhaps a few pixels, a few right. handful of pixels registered in the brain. However, if you have enhanced humans, cyborgs, then you could have superhuman properties. But there are some mutants with powers that are beyond known science. <laughs> Jean Grey is a telekinetic. Right. She can lift objects at will. Right. We don't know how to do that. We can't do that? No, we can't do that. It's not one of the four fundamental forces. Okay. And walking through walls, you would have to be able to control the electron wave function of each atom. And we don't have a clue as to how to walk through walls. So they really so are... Don't try it. They're vi no, I have tried it. It's not pleasant. They are, vi they are violating physical laws, in, I mean, literally physical laws that, that just can't be violated. That's right. Physical laws as we know them, telekinesis and telepathy and walking through walls, we're clueless as to how to do that. Now, the Matrix is somewhat different because they don't say you're in the physical universe. You're in a, you know, a virtual reality universe where, of course, anything's possible in the computer world, right? That's right. However, these machines in the Matrix are dangerous. Uh, they, they think of us as human car batteries, basically. Yes. And, however, you have to see that... We don't have to fear the machines yet. Our most advanced robots have the intelligence of a cockroach, a retarded, <laughs> lobotomized cockroach. Not even a smart cockroach. <laughs> Not even smart cockroaches. And by the time our machines become as intelligent as a dog or a cat or a monkey, that's when we have to worry. That's when we have to put a chip in their brain to shut them off right. so they don't become murderous like in The Matrix. A great many computer scientists... And if they become murderous, because there's no law of physics preventing machines from exceeding the intelligence right. of a human. Right. Well, that's decades away. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, isn't that Isaac Asimov's r robotic rules? They're very important. You have these rules that keep robots or machines from hurting us. That's right. However, in The Matrix, you know, humans do fight back. However, they fight back in a place called Zion, which right. is located near the center of the Earth. Is that However, possible? I must, well, I must say that the Earth is solid. There's yeah. nothing in, so hollow <laughs> in the center of the Earth. And we know that because of earthquakes. Earthquakes have seismic waves that go right to the center of the Earth. Oh, and satellites. 
Satellites go around the Earth measuring gravitational anomalies. So we know that the Earth is solid. So Zion would have to be located in a cave, a cave rather than near the center of the Earth. But at the center of the Earth, isn't the, the heat and the pressure so intense, so stupendous, that you really couldn't put a cave down there, could you? It wouldn't last long at all, right? <laughs> so we have to take a certain liberty, uh, yeah. certain liberties with the truth, I think. Now, uh, let's talk about virtual reality. How much computer power would be necessary to create a world that vivid, that real, that complete? It would take more than all the computers on the planet Earth to simulate on a laptop. That's about as far as we've gotten in terms of hooking up a living brain to a PC. So there are no electrodes yet that can hook into the spinal cord. Well, Professor Kaku, you're so smart and you know all the science. Does that hinder your ability to enjoy movies like The Matrix or X-Men or Star Wars or Star Trek? Nah. <laughs> One of the fun things about the movies is I get to I get to get out of my scientist clothes right. and become a teenager all over again. It's a lot of fun. And root for the good guys and really suspend the law of physics. And sometimes you can know too much physics for your own good. Absolutely. I know there are some, in fact, many scientists who say, I, we, I was influenced by the science fiction that I read or saw as a kid to kind of follow the dreams that I'm following as an adult. Were you influenced that way by science fiction? That's right. You know, I used to watch Flash Gordon. A lot of kids don't know that, but uh, Flash Gordon used to dominate uh, yeah. the movies and the TVs years ago. And I, I always knew, however, that it was Dr. Zarkoff, not Flash Gordon, that really made the series work. Uh, Flash <laughs> Gordon got the girl, but it was Dr. Zarkoff that made it work. Nothing without Dr. Zarkoff. Well, Dr. Zarkoff, I mean, Dr. Kaku, it's so great to have you on the show. We should, you should change your website to mkaku slash zarkoff.org. Now we know his we're inspiration. Up, we're up to 17 million hits, by the way, hey, that's thanks great. to Screensavers. Oh, and, that's and Michael wonderful. Phillips and Corey. And we have a good team of webmasters making that the website mkaku.org such a popular hit, especially with, with children and interested young people. My daughter was asking me about you. She's 11 years old. She wants to know about string theory. And we were at the Einstein exhibit at the uh, muse, uh, museum in New York City, the Natural History Museum. And, of course, right. they, you're, you're shown there and quoted. And she said, I, oh, he's great. I want to know more about him. I said, well, I talk to him every, every few months on the screensaver. She's a fan of yours, Dr. Kaku. Ah, 11 years old. That's Isn't that great. great? She wants to That's about when string, you have to get them. She wants to know about string theory. I said, I'll let Michio tell you because I, <laughs> I can't do it at all. <laughs> Dr. Kaku, it's so great to talk to you once again. All right, my pleasure. Anytime. Thanks for joining us. Look for a great article by Michio Kaku on our website at thescreensavers.com. And, of course, links to mkaku.org, a wonderful site.